Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Wednesday night crafty time. I want to say hello to everyone and say to Lori, our friend, we're so sorry about Dr. Pepper. I know you've been struggling with your little kitty for quite a while. Hello, Kelsey and Laura, Allison, and I saw my friend, let's see, Ray Ann, I believe is here. Hello, Martha, Hockey Spaz. Hello, Patricia, Jen. Hello, Vicki, Susan. Lots of friends here this evening. Hello, hello. Okay, so on Monday evening, I had a good time just smushing paint brushes the whole nine yards. Now I have already um, done some embossing folders here um, and just pulled out different ones. And I'm going to do a couple of different cards tonight. I'm going to do like a St. Patrick's Day and then one that is not my huge, I will say that. So I did remember to hit the play button tonight. So we're already winning for that for tonight. Let's see. Hello, Chris, Janet, Vicki. Hello, Rayanne. I'm so glad that you're back. I told you all of our little sweethearts that we have in here. They're a good group. Okay, before we start, I want to remind everybody that we have a class coming up. I think most of you probably already know this. March 23rd at 2 p.m. I have a couple of different options here for class. Uh, you can make the uh, mailbox shaped card bursting with spring flowers or you can add your little mailbox on to a card. So we're going to talk all about different ink blending here. Um, the only thing here on this, on that little post or that mailbox that is colored cardstock is the mailbox itself itself. Everything else starts out with white paper and I'm going to show you how I ink blended all of those pretty flowers. If you are interested in this class and you did not receive the newsletter that had the class information in it, if you will email me at kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y at honeybeestamps.com, I will send you all the information that you need for the class. There's also a little coupon code for all the items that I'll be using in the class. And I always tell all of our friends that it's a great time to stock up on um, like glue, blending brushes, uh, distress oxide inks, if you want any of that. So it's a good time to stock up on that. Let's see, how do I get the emails? You can go on to honeybeestamps.com and ask to be subscribed. So there's probably like a little pop-up or something that says, do you want to be subscribed to the emails? You can do it that way. You can also email me at that email address or email customercare at honeybeestamps.com. And I answer all those emails as well. And I can um, subscribe you uh, so you'll get all that stuff. Let's see here, waiting for the order. It's If you've ordered in the last, you know, few days, um, it's probably already gone out because the warehouse girls are working really quick right now. Okay, so without further ado, let's go down here. Let's go to my desk view. Okay, so these are three of the backgrounds that I created on Monday night. If you'll remember, I started out with like this crazy tie dye one. If any of you have questions on ink, I did go back in Monday night's live and I added all of the ink shades um, that I used for that. Now remember that they are regular distress inks. They, the, none of these are oxides. And so that is something to think about when you, um, go to hunt for those if you don't already have them. Okay, so the tie-dye ink, I use the Dogwood Blooms embossing folder. This one, oh, I cannot for the life of me remember what this one is called. Of course, I always forget the names. And then this is Fall Splendor, I believe. I'm horrible with names. You can see that this one I boogered up and I forgot to, this is actually what we call the right side, but it's pretty just like that too. All right. So with this one, I'm going to start with this one first and I am going to do a little good luck St. Patrick's Day card with this. 
And I'm going to start out with some anti-static ink. I just have one of those little um, anti-static little buddy bag things that I'm going to rub all over the top. And there's, you know, if you go to YouTube, that's usually, I mean, we all hunt YouTube, right? Um, for different techniques and things, you'll find all kinds of techniques with embossing folders. And um, what's so funny about the other card that I'm going to show you here in a minute, it's funny is because I went to Lisa and I was like, oh my gosh, I found the cutest idea for this card. And she was like, I think I've seen that before. And I was like, no, you know, I saw this years ago. It was a video. Sure enough, one of our design team members um, did almost the exact same card. Like, and Lisa had posted it the day before. So, you know, I'm not as original as I thought, but you know, what do we do? So I'm going to get this powder. And the reason that why I'm pouncing it on here is because I want it to kind of get down into the valleys and then I'm going to take my um, um, clear ink. So my embossing ink, I'm going to rub all over the top of this and I'm going to do it kind of in sections. That way I don't make too bad of a total mess. You guys know me, then I'm like a messy crafter, but I'm going to give this a little bit of a rub down. So it just hits the high points of um where we have embossed that. And I am going to pour over the top my good old Brutus Monroe Gilded Embossing Powder. Now this is my very favorite gold embossing powder. It's a really pretty gold that goes with just about all the gold. So it goes with a lot of our pearls and our gold ink. Now do you see where it's gonna hit on those little areas? And I'm going to go ahead and heat this before I make a total mess. Let's see. Hey, Don. Okay, so I'm going to hold it. Here's what we're going to have to do. Because you know, I'm going to blow that powder all over my desk if I do it that way. And ask me how I know that I'll do that. Okay, so I'm going to go over this powder. We're going to watch the magic of the embossing powder. And then I'm going to do the other half. Okay, so we've got this so far. So we see the pretty gold on there. And I thought those kind of look like little clovers or something. Okay, so I'm going to hook now my tweezers right down here. It's just giving me an extra hand. And then I am going to, let's see if I can kind of hold it. And then we're going to give this end a little rub down with the embossing ink pad. And now let's do the same thing on this end. And let's go all over the top. And let's give it a little tap off. And that looks like I've got pretty good coverage there. And let's go ahead, you know, before I make a big boo-boo, let's go ahead and dump that back in because that's another one. Ask me how I know that I'll knock this over because it may have happened a couple of times or two. All right. Hey, Gail. Hey, Carol. All right, so let's go over this. And then we're going to have one background ready to go on a card. I think it's kind of fun with the three different colors of greens. This would be pretty in pinks and like lavenders too, because they kind of look like little flowers as well. So this would be a really pretty little springy card. Okay. 
I don't want to go over that too much because I don't want to get it too crunchy looking. That's what I call it. When you overheat your embossing powder, it turns a little crunchy. But I love how this has hit like these in between. It almost add, it looks like you've added like little pearls or a little something on there. So I'm going to set this one aside and let that set up. Now, let me show you what I thought was my brilliant idea that I... I didn't come up with. I actually saw a YouTube creator um, come up with, but she had like a floral embossing folder. She had done this technique with the inks and kind of done the messy painting and things like that. And I thought that is really cool. I'm going to share that with my friends. And then one of our smart design team members um, had done it. Okay. So what the lady had done is she had taken a really fine tip like Sharpie marker, or you could use like your good old like Micron um, pens. Um, but I'm going to start because this is like a honeybee pen, but it's a Sharpie. Now, I'm not going to do this all tonight, but what she did was she used the bumps in the embossed area and she first traced it with a really fine tip black marker. Okay, and then she colored in the flat areas. So that's why I, I mentioned, like, if you're going to do this, I highly recommend using an embossing folder that has a lot of open area, meaning the, the flats in between the little flowers and the twigs and things. Okay. Now, a lot of you are saying, oh my word, Kelly, that is just too much. Okay, see these big areas? So this is where you would take a little bit of a little fatter Sharpie pen and you can kind of go around and then fill in. And uh, okay, now here's what we're doing. Now, is this something that Kelly, the lazy girl crafter, would normally do? Absolutely not. Because all of you know that I'm the lazy girl crafter, right? And so let me just tell you, I took one for the team and I put on, I can't remember what stupid program that I put on yesterday, but I did my most favorite background that we did the other night, the pinks. And I colored in the whole background. I sat with my little program on the TV. Here, we got to have a whole little discussion. Sat with my program on the TV. I know everybody say hockey space. I couldn't do this card. You could do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And there are boo-boos. Like the lady I watched on the YouTube video was super careful. And she was like, oh, do that. Kelly is the lazy girl crafter. I'm not super careful, okay? You, if you go through there, like right here, boo-boos, see where I went on the line, I colored outside the lines. But now that it's done, I do love it. And in fact, our friend Lisa, who I don't know that Lisa is here, Lisa said, this is my card. You're sending me, this is my card. Okay, so I colored in all the little spaces with, with my program on my computer here. And then with the, one of the fine tips, I went in and some of the little indents and little details, you know, all those little details that we like in the petals and the leaves and things like that. I went in and you can see I didn't do every little thing, but I went in and just added some little swish marks here and there, right? Okay, so now we've got our green and then we have our black and pink. So, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? We can just have fun and create. Now, this is where I was originally going with this whole idea. But you can see on a design like this or even like this one, there's... It may be hard to color in the leaves. Maybe the leaves wouldn't be too bad, but they might be hard to do this technique with busy, busy, highly detailed, lots of coverage embossing folders. OK, so that's where we're headed. So with the green, I am going to create a little like good luck 
kind of little St. Patty's Day situation. And then with the pink one, this is going to be Lisa's, she's claimed it, card. And we're going to do kind of just a really pretty floral, okay? So I need to stamp some pretty sentiments. And that's why I didn't want to... Um, this is this is too much to color in like obviously on a live stream so that's why we didn't do all that but that is how you achieve that with a fine tip marker and then a good old just good old-fashioned sharpie pen okay so i am going to come i'm going to back up just a little bit so now i can pull in my sentiment set so you can see here this one this was my trial do you remember the other day when i did like this number to you guys this was my trial where i thought okay i started coloring all this in and then i thought okay this is gonna be cute like if you just look here i was like okay we can do this i can do this i can put on my my tv show and just start coloring all right so I'm going to pull out my Misty and I'm going to stamp both of my sentiments um, together. So I'm going to slip in some white paper for my green card. And then I've got some of the pink that I'm going to add to our pink card. Now I'm going to pull out some uh, big sentiments and this one is called thinking of you big time. I love this. If you've done like some kind of like ink blended background or, you know, a background like this, you know, you, you don't want to put like more florals over the top of it really. So just a nice sentiment that's going to kind of, um, you know, set there on top of your background. That's kind of the way to go. You could even go with something small, but I'm going to use these thinking of you big time. Now on the green card, I'm going to stamp just good luck. And then on Lisa's pink card, I'm going to stamp a hello. Big time is the best series. They are good. They're good when you need sometimes, and here's my thought process, and Carol and Dawn, who are there in the comments, they're on our design teams, and I want to hear you guys, all of our friends take on this as well. But sometimes when you do, let's say you have a floral card. I don't have one here right um, where, that I can grab. But sometimes when you have a floral card, and let's say you've done a big, beautiful um, scene or that has all these florals and stuff, sometimes you just want a little dainty sentiment that's not going to take away from all, all your hard work, right? And then sometimes when you've done like a, a, a background or, you know, something like this that we're creating tonight, something sometimes it just calls for a big, nice sentiment that you can just add to your background and then kind of call it good. It kind of depends, but okay. So the, the pink, I'm going to stamp in black onto the pink and it's just going to kind of tie everything together. And then with the good luck, I'm going to stamp it in um, our embossing ink. And I'm going to emboss it in the same gold. So everything's going to kind of tie together. Oh, I'll slap a big old sentiment right on top of those florals too. Hello. Dawn is a rebel. Dawn's a rebel. Dawn, you don't need to be covering up all your pretty painting and your ink blending and all your pretty things and your coloring Let's see, whatever. Totally agree with what you said. I don't want to ever cover up that beautiful hard work. I know, Carol. See, Carol, Carol's like me. Okay, now, these sentiments are so chunky. You can press harder. I find with the good, chunky, big sentiments, you can even use your pressure tool. It's when the sentiments are nice and dainty that you want to be a little more careful about how hard you press. And I'm going to cover this 
really well with the embossing ink and go over it a couple of times because it has happened live before where I've stamped it one time and you think that it looks good and then I pour the embossing powder over it and it's yucko. So I'm going to make sure that three times is the charm. And then once you pour the embossing powder over it really and take it out of the misty, it's kind of wah, wah, wah. And that one kind of goes in the dumpster sometimes. Okay. So this one is ready to come out. This one is ready to be die cut. So I'm going to lay that one aside. And let's pull out that pretty gold embossing powder again. Let's see here. And Dawn, I am awed by your... Yes, same. I'm awed by Carol's creations. Though, Carol, I think... I think it was you that Miss Rayanne, who is in the chat, Rayanne, Carol, was it you that created the really pretty um, little postcard card that was had the little green cottage on it? I think it was you that did that. But Rayanne, who is here watching the live, she was super inspired by your card, and she created some really pretty ones. And unfortunately... I don't have them in this um, to show everybody again, but um, she showed me and I shared them the other night. Let's see here. But I think it was Carol. Let's see here. Okay. Now I see these probably won't show when they're die cut, but you know, let's, Kelly's going to be a rule follower tonight, which I never am. Let's scooch these little things away. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Let's see, Carol. Hmm. I don't remember. Yes, I don't. Carol. Well, Carol, that vacation, I think, has warped your memory. All right. So let's keep emboss this. I think it was you, though. All right. So there we got our good look. Now, let's pull out our good old little bitty buzz cutter. Okay, I have to give my disclaimer, like I have, just in case anybody hasn't heard it. The bitty buzz cutter is sold out right now, but we are working with our manufacturers to get it back. But anytime you have to um, manufacture like, you know, thousands at a time, um, especially like little machines like this, and it, it takes, it's a good while. So we're working on it. All right, now I gotta find my good luck. Let's see if this is it. Yep, there it is. And there's the hello. And let's put these down. And then I need to use a piece of tape because knowing my luck, it'll shift. Just when I was ready to get the Bitty Buzz cutter, it went off stuff. I know. I'm so sorry. And you know, um, I think we ordered, I can't remember what our initial shipment was. Um, oh man, I can't remember a thousand, five thousand, you know, and it's one of those things that, you know, when you're a small company, so I understand like Melissa's decisions and things, like especially now that I do a lot of our, or do our customer care and see like numbers and things is, um, when you're a small business, you have to see like, okay, how many people are really going to buy this? And, you know, you don't want it to sit there. So I get it. So, But it takes a while to get things back. All right. So let's get this Hello Cut. I love my Bitty Buzz Cutter. Oh, Miss Lori, I'm so glad. It really is nice. I've had other, um, other brands. And this one, I, ha I do. And I'm not just saying that because um, I work for Melissa and Honeybee. But this one really is good. Okay, so I'm going to have this 
black hello that we're just, look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay. So I can't get too excited about that. Let me lay that aside. Let's get this little good luck all taped down here. If Kelly can find the tape. There it is. Hiding. Three millimeter. Yes. Three millimeter and five millimeter. There are two plates. And um, honestly, these are pretty new plates, but I still have my old, my very first plates, like setting over on the side of my desk. And they're not warped. I could still use them. Now, are they a little eaten up from cutting into them a million times? Yes. Um, but, you know, they hold up really, really well. Okay, so let me give this guy, I want to give him a haircut so he'll fit down in here. The width and the length. Oh, okay. Let's see here. Um, I think it's on the platform is um, three and a half inches wide and then the plates length is six and a half. So three and a half by six and a half. I don't know if that helps you at all, but it is perfect for sentiments, of course. And then there's a lot of times that I am being lazy bones and if I'm doing like our lovely layers or um, something like that with like little, little flat, lots of little flowers or lots of little pieces, I'll, I'll pull this out because it's just sitting here on my desk and I'll use that for little things. If I'm cutting like mass, mass cutting lots of things. Um, I have the big Gemini and I use it because I usually will run a whole eight and a half by 11 sheet full of die cuts all at one time. So, but you know, not every crafter needs that large of a machine. It just depends on what you need. Okay. So let's get these little guys put together. Now look how cute. Look how cute that's going to be. All right. So let's get our adhesive here. Let's see here. Is there a metal shim available for the cutter? There is not. And I have never needed it. Um, so S. Suzuka. I have never needed uh, a shim in mine. With any of my stuff. Now, I will tell you that I can't remember what it is that I was cutting probably some really long sentiment or something um I sometimes you have to watch and this is with every die machine the Gemini hours um let me see if I can get my glue to come out let's see will they ever make a magnetic plate I don't know but that's a great idea uh, with it, with the Gemini, with it, with any die cutting machine, you have to run, watch sometimes the direction in which you run your dies through the machine, if that makes sense, because r running it a little off or horizontal instead of, you know, one way or the other makes it cut better for whatever reason. I'm afraid... Let me tell you a story while I'm doing this. I can't get my glue to come out. And the other day, I squeezed my glue really hard. And I literally shot glue across my craft room. And so I'm trying to be really gentle with it right now because I've done some nutty things. I've shot like Nouveau drops across my craft room. And then you find it. I, we were still finding Nouveau drops when we moved out of that house. And it was like on the ceiling. It was everywhere. So I'm trying to be careful because I squeezed my glue and shot it all the way across the room the other day. So let's put this on here. Let's make sure we're going all the right direction. And then I'm going to hold this up right in front of my eyes and kind of shimmy it around and then I'm going to kind of hold it down to let it really grab. Let's see. Wow. Great. Sweet. Yes. Sh let's see here. Mm -hmm. Done that. Don. Yep. 
I shot a die across my room and still haven't found it. Okay, Jen, you have to get a magnet. And I'm not talking like any magnet. Go to your local, and this is going to sound like I'm a Looney Tune, but go to your local like auto parts store and get one of those really big like auto magnets like this. And then just, it almost is like pushing a vacuum cleaner across your room. But my husband came home with that one time and I, I told, I was like, dude, that may be a little excessive and tell I needed that thing. And then I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for that stupid magnet because um, I can literally like drag it across the floor and it finds all kinds of little things. So keep one in your, I have one over here in the corner and it's ridiculous, but it really has come in handy. So, all right, so let's get the adhesive all over this little green one without shooting the cap off. Yes, my fingers are not working. I did that and my cat tried to catch it. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna place it down and then I like to pick it up and just kind of eyeball it and then I'll give it a good press. I'm liking this green with the gold on it. It's fun. Let's see, Dogwood Blooms. Thank you. I don't know who's being my moderator over there, but thank you so much. Hockey Spaz, I see you. Lisa is fired tonight. You know, usually Kelly's the one that gets fired. I, I like to tease, um, well, you guys, but I like to tease uh, Melissa and Lisa that I'm always going to do something to get fired. Lisa's fired. I'm going to tell her that she's fired because I don't think she's here. Let's see here. I find dyes stuck to the bottom of my phone case. Oh, magnet. Yes. The Misty, the back of the Misty right is like the notorious spot to um, find all your dyes and see now. Oh, here's my tweezers. All right. So this pretty hello. I'm just going to put right there in the center and I'm going to place it. But then, come on now, stick to those little flowers. I'm going to place it, and then I kind of want to hold this up, too, because this, like, scripty writing on this, it's a little hard to tell, like, exactly how you want it to go. That one's looking good. So let's do this one. Let's see, my iPad has small die stuck to it. All the times. And so you can buy an extending one that has a magnet on the end. Hardware source. Yes, Harbor Freight. Just drag it all around your floor. That's exactly what I do. Who is that? Barb. Me too. I'll show you here in a minute when I flip the camera around how funny this thing is. And my husband, bless him, he was so proud when he came in with that magnet. And I thought, oh my gosh, because I had been using this one i used to be a science teacher and this was everything is stuck to it hold on i had this in a uh see how it's stuck to it i had this in a science kit and so i was using this little tiny magnet and my husband said don't you need something bigger than that and i was like oh no you know this is fine and he came home from probably harbor freight with that big old magnet I thought it was crazy until I needed it, but I was thankful. I had to go back and apologize after that. Okay. Well, let's get this little good luck stuck here. And I'm going to stick him kind of right up in there. And then we're going to press and hold. Let's see here. I think it was Little Feet that showed how to do a dark background with these embossing folders you would use the other side of the embossed background. Yeah, you can totally do that with ink too and try to do it like that. Bobby McPherson, she's using a mix of old and new on these layers. Thank you, Dawn. You're hired. Question. Thank you, Bobby. I do see. Thank you for putting question there too. That's super smart. And it helps um, our my helpers that I have tonight. Thank goodness for all of our sweet friends. Um, helps me when I don't look up and see it. All right, let's see if that's going to stick down there. Okay, 
I think I'm going to call these two because this one has so much, let's see, this one is has so much of the shine and gold going on. It doesn't really need any pearls or gems or anything like that. And then this one, I don't think that needs anything at all. So really pretty, really fun how those turned out. Okay, now raise your hand in the chat if you're actually going to try one of these. And I'm challenging everyone to try that because it's really not, it's not hard. It took me probably an hour of watching a TV program to do that right? But it's stunning. The black background is stunning like that. Let's see here. Okay. Zan has got her hand raised. I see you. Lovely. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let me show you while we're talking about the magnet of how crazy this is. Do you see this? See the handle that keeps on going? So I literally, you push it like a little, like a vacuum or a broom or something. And it the head of it like does this and you and just um, find all the missing things on the floor. I find all kinds of good things. Let's see here. Definitely not a car to make for you. Just anyway, that is the truth, Zan. This and see, that's like Lisa saw this yesterday. And she's like, oh, that one's my card. And of course, I'm going to, uh, Carol's laughing. Um, uh, of course, I'll send it to Lisa. Of course. That is a big, I told y'all, I told you it was ridiculous, but it, it works. And I, they're probably, they're probably not that pricey at like Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is pretty inexpensive, I think. Okay, I'm looking in my stash right now for a good folder that would work. You're awesome, Lita. Okay, you know what? I saw Dawn was helping tonight. Oh, I see Keiko too. Lots of our friends. Dawn, can you scroll through and can you tell us, will you type in the winner for me tonight if you don't mind doing that? That would be awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to let Dawn be my, my little helper. Let's see. Uh, the local hardware share carry magnet wands also awesome. Thank you, Erica. Let's see here. You can find the scissors. You you will find everything. Let me just tell you. I have to get them more embossing folders. They're fun. And of course, Monday night, I hope Dawn is still here. Monday night is our sneak peek to our Celebrate release. We have a big birthday coming up. It'll be nine years. There's Dawn. Thank you, my friend. Um, Honeybee Stamps is nine years old coming up, so we're doing a big birthday release. All right, Madeline Lippman, you are our winner. Congratulations, my friend. Madeline, if you will email me, thank you, Don, at kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y, at honeybeestamps.com, I am going to send you a prize. And everyone, I hope I see you Monday night. You're not going to want to miss the sneak peeks. Don't forget, you all see everything first here in our group. So if you want to get a good look at all the fun things coming up, then come and join me on Monday. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye, friends.